A couple weeks ago, I posted a poll on YouTube asking you guys what game you'd like to see Kathy and I play next. Honestly, I was expecting Minecraft to win, but I should have known my audience a little better because Dark Souls 2 won without much competition. I guess I can only blame myself for that, huh? Well, that's alright. I mean, I've played it before. No, uh, kinda. Before this video, I'd say I have about a collective 20-ish hours in Dark Souls 2. I even tried to beat it on stream almost four years ago. Oh my god, they're all chasing me. I thought they would give up after a while, I won't lie. RUN! Enter the mist, man. Hey, bud. Uh... I've never really gotten close to actually finishing the game though, so this time, I'll really need Kathy's help. Thankfully for me, Kathy not only knows much more about Dark Souls 2 than she did about Elden Ring, I didn't know anything about Elden Ring, but she also has received a bit of an upgrade, from the chat GPT 3.5 language model to the 4.0 model. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be back. I've also decided that I will not be using any outside help for this playthrough at all. If you're like me, when you play a Souls game, you usually have a wiki open the whole time because they can be hard games to figure out on your own, but not this time. This playthrough will depend solely on Kathy's knowledge and my ability to figure things out. Think you can handle that, Kathy? I know I can. This is gonna be a breeze. Sweet, glad to hear it. So first and foremost, we need a character. Kathy, character me. Sure thing. Our character will be a female. She has dark skin, silver hair, violet eyes, and a lean and athletic build. Wow, this is probably the best looking character I've ever made. What about her class and starting gift, Kathy? What's our build gonna look like? She is a sorcerer. She values attacking from a distance and keeping a small sidearm for physical encounters. She also carries the bonfire aesthetic. So not too different from our last character, huh? I prefer some hacking and slashing, but I don't mind a little magic action. Finally then, we need to give her a name. What should we name her? Her name is Thalia, the Unseen. Ah, Unseen, because she attacks from far away, right? Not quite. You see, Thalia was once a seer in a far-off kingdom, revered and feared for her abilities to glimpse into the Unseen. Yet, she was cast out when her visions began to predict the fall of her kingdom. Thrown into the wild, Thalia had to adapt quickly to survive. She focused on honing her magic, training her mind and body for the harsh realities of the world. She has come to Drangliac seeking answers, wielding the destructive forces of sorcery in hopes of altering the cruel fate she had foreseen. Wow, that was a lot more than I was expecting. You're really on your game today, Kathy. Thanks. Okay, folks at home, I think we're ready to get started. Wow, magic is definitely gonna take some getting used to. And not having a dedicated jump button like in Elden Ring. And being f***ing ugly when I die. <laughs> So, Kathy, I know I have to go to Majula right away, but what should be my next objective? I would say to track down Carhillion of the Fold. He's a merchant who sells sorceries that will make your build a great deal more versatile. Hmm, where do I go to find him? Well, that's a bit of a problem. Carhillion is located in the No Man's Wharf area, an area that may be a bit difficult to reach for a novice such as yourself. Jeez, a little early to be hurting my feelings, isn't it? Before finding Carhillion, why don't you first try and defeat the last giant? He is considered to be the tutorial boss for Dark Souls 2, and the Forest of the Fallen Giants should be a much easier area to traverse. I guess I've got no reason to complain. An easier area would be a great way for me to test out my new sorcery skills. I've never actually used sorceries, miracles, or pyromancies in the Dark Souls trilogy before, so this is a neat experience. Kathy was right when she said this area was a bit easier. Other than getting my head bit off, the enemies here weren't all too much of a challenge, and being able to attack from a distance is helping a lot. I am noticing though that even weaker, average enemies have attacks and patterns that can be pretty tough to dodge. Definitely gonna have to be on my guard. Also, the pursuer is f***ing scary. I don't want anything to do with that guy. Kathy told me I would get a spell if I blew up this wall, but she f***ing lied. I found it later though, and she was pretty close. I got absolutely gangbanged, something I'm sure happens to most people on their first playthrough, or at least that's what I need to tell myself. And when I tried to approach the last giant, I learned that you are not invincible when traversing the fog. That blows. The last giant himself, though, was an absolute cakewalk. The poor guy really wasn't very versatile, so, uh, you know, GG's to him. Now that I've got some souls to spend, though, Kathy, what should I be putting my levels into? As a sorcerer, the two most important attributes would be intelligence and attunement. Next, I'd say to raise your vigor. Thalia will be wearing lighter armor, so she won't have much protecting her. Then your endurance and adaptability would come next, so that you can cast more spells at once and do them quicker. I would only say to raise your strength and dexterity to match whatever sidearm Thalia is using. Oh yeah, that reminds me. What 
sidearm should Thalia use? Something quick like the dagger or rapier would be best. I don't mind the dagger, but I think the rapier is too good to pass up. I won't be able to use it for a while, but good to know it can be part of my build. Now, I don't know anything about staffs. Is there a staff I should be trying to get? I believe the sorcerer staff, the staff you currently have, should be powerful enough. Hey, saves me some time trying to find something else. So, Kathy, you mentioned Carhillion and No Man's Wharf. How do I get there? You'll first have to go through the Hyde's Tower of Flame area. Once defeating the Dragon Rider, you'll unlock the path to No Man's Wharf. I remember the Dragon Rider. He's the guy I made fall down, right? That's correct. I definitely remember this place. These knights don't f around, and they will chase you to the ends of the earth. Anyways, let's check on the Dragon Rider. Yeah, he's gonna be tough. What do you think, Kathy? Is there any way for me to kill him? I don't know. Easier? Yes. You can expand the arena by pulling various levers scattered across the level, making it easier for Thalia to battle from afar. I was really hoping she was going to tell me to gimp him, but this is fine. I didn't realize that you can make the arena even bigger at the time, but it being even a little bigger helped a lot. I found the Ring of Binding, which Kathy approved of, which helped a little with subsequent attempts against the Dragon Rider. Eventually, through sheer will, determination, and running scared, I managed to kill him. That means I can go find Carhelion, right Kathy? Yes, you can now travel to No Man's Wharf. However, the Hyde's Tower area isn't complete yet. After you obtain some new sorceries, I would recommend coming back to the area to battle the old Dragon Slayer boss. Damn, totally forgot he existed. Let's go get some spells first, shall we? I didn't actually know where to find Carhelion, so it took a good while, but after unlocking the shortcut to the boss here, I found him sitting on the dock. He's got a lot of new spells. Kathy, any suggestions? Any sorceries Carhelion sells will make for good additions to Thalia's build, specifically the Great Soul Arrow and the Heavy Soul Arrow spells. I sure agree. These spells are great. Like Kathy said though, I've got to go face the old Dragon Slayer. Funny enough, there's actually a dragon sitting right outside his arena. To lower the gate to the boss fight, I guess I have to do his job for him. I lowered the gate and faced off against Ornsteet, I mean the old Dragon Slayer. He's cool, more aggressive than the bosses I've fought thus far, so running away from him the whole fight was harder than it has been, but with my new spells, I was doing enough damage to end this fight without taking too much damage myself. The Knight of the Blue, or whoever the f this is, was a major douche. I thought about killing him, but Kathy Kathy talked me down. Speaking of Kathy, where should I go next? The next area you should go to is the Lost Bastille. This area has several bosses, one of them being the Lost Sinner, one of the main four bosses you'll need to face to complete Dark Souls 2. Got it. Lost Bastille. Uh, how do I get there? There are two ways to reach the Lost Bastille. You can defeat the Flexile Sentry in No Man's Wharf and travel there by boat, or you can defeat the Pursuer and be carried to the area by a bird. Interesting. So either way, I'll need to go through a boss. You pick for me, Kathy. Flexile Sentry or Pursuer? You should do both. Defeating both bosses will reward you with even more souls, ultimately making you stronger for the Lost Bastille area itself. Yeah, I guess I should have just picked. But she's right. Getting stronger is kind of a big deal, so let's do it. First, I'll go Go fight the Flexile Sentry. With magic, this was hardly a fight. The Flexile Sentry's weakness is that when it starts an attack, it's stuck in this animation for a while, making it easy to pelt it with soul arrows of your choosing. I killed it and found the Pyromancy Flame just past the boss room. Should I use any pyromancies, Kathy? Adding some pyromancies into Thalia's build could diversify her magic abilities, offering her more versatility in combat situations. That's a yes. I'll stick to mostly sorceries, but I'll keep the pyromancies in my back pocket for now. I took the boat to the Lost Bastille, like Kathy said, hit the bonfire, and then left to go fight the Pursuer. The Pursuer may be even more aggressive than the old Dragon Slayer. He chased me down the whole time. I mean, I guess that's why they call him the Pursuer, but regardless, I killed him just the same. I ran to the next was carried away by a bird, and dropped into a different area than where the boat had taken me. I guess I just assumed it would bring me to the same place, but this is cool too. Now, I've been to this area before. It's not totally new to me, but it was only once, and it was a long time ago. So, I struggled my way through here for much longer than I'd like to admit. Kathy, what exactly should I be trying to do here? Your first objective should be to take out the Ruined Sentinels. They block the path to the Lost Sinner, who is the main boss you need to take out in this area. I'm not totally sure if you're right about them blocking off the path, but if you say so, I do so. The Ruined Sentinels pushed my sh** in on my first attempt. Just literally no chance. But after some soul farming and upgrading my equipment a bit, I went back to them and... Yeah, they're still really hard. Not impossible, though. It just took me focusing a bit more on doing damage with my repeater to make the fight work. Yeah, no, I don't think they were blocking off sh**. Thanks for that, Kathy. 
Timothy. I remember having to light up the Lost Sinners boss room to make the fight easier, so I went to do that, but the doors were locked. Kathy, where's the key? You can obtain the Bastille key from defeating the Belfry Gargoyles. Holy sh**, I completely forgot about them. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but Kathy was getting a little mixed up here. I'm playing on the Scholar of the First Sin edition of Dark Souls 2. In this edition, you get the Bastille key in the overworld, something I picked up later without even noticing. But she was right, that in the original version of Dark Souls 2, you have to fight the Belfry Gargoyles. But with magic, it wasn't really too bad. I beat them on my first try, actually. Just to find out, of course, that I already had the Bastille key and didn't need to go through that fight at all. Once again, thanks for that, Kathy. I took the key, unlocked the doors around the Lost Sinner's room, lit the oil, and entered the fight. With the lights on, the Lost Sinner is a much easier battle. Just try and keep your distance, cast some spells when she misses her attacks, and bada bing, bada boom, you've got your first soul of a great one. Well, that wasn't too bad. What's next, Kathy? Great job, Dumpy. If you were able to handle the Lost Sinner, then you should certainly be ready for the next area, Huntsman's Cops. Oh yeah, the place I have to pay 2,000 souls to even get to. Right, this area is probably my least favorite in the whole game. Meh, maybe behind one I'll talk about later, but frankly, it f***ing sucks. The enemies are annoying. It's cramped, there's poison all over the place, and I have no god idea where the next bonfire is. I found the sorcery Soul Spear on my journey, a spell Kathy approved of, and ended up running into the next boss accidentally, the Skeleton Lords. F*** these guys, dude. This is such a stupid fight. I didn't have time to ask Kathy for help because, you know, boss fight. But after you kill the skeleton lords, the rest of the boss fight is just a mob of skeletons. They're not very strong, mind you, and I beat them on my first try. But this is the first fight that, to me, just feels... Yeah, stupid is the word. There's plenty more to come, though. Don't worry. Where to next, Kathy? The next area is the Harvest Valley. This area consists of two bosses, the Executioner's Chariot and Mytha, the Baneful Queen. I think we're starting to get to where I dropped Dark Souls 2 because... At this point, I have no idea where I am. Kathy says I'm in the right place, though, and I moderately trust her. I met Chloanne, one of the few very nice NPCs in this game, and then pretty much ran for my life through the rest of this area. I picked up a bunch of items along the way and ended up in a mad dash to get away from some enemies and stumbled into the boss fight of... Neither of the people Kathy said would be here. Kathy, what the f***? The covetous demon is pee pee poo poo baby mode, so it's not really like it even mattered, but I was still a little concerned that Kathy was dead wrong. You want to explain that one? I apologize. Mytha the Baneful Queen is in the next area, the Earthen Peak. You should travel there and battle her. What about the Executioner's Chariot? I'm not sure what the Executioner's Chariot is. Are you f***ing with me? As an AI language model, I'm not capable of- Jesus, Kathy, never mind. Let's go find Mytha. I actually remember from the Democracy's old videos, shoutouts to him, that you can eliminate the poison pool in Mytha's arena by burning this windmill. Sure enough, he was right. I truly cannot imagine trying to fight her while standing in a sea of pain, but without it, she wasn't much of a challenge. The Iron Keep comes directly after this boss fight. Kathy, is this where I should be? Yes, you are in the right area. Sick. And what should I be doing here exactly? Ultimately, your goal is to defeat the old Iron King, who possesses another soul of a great one. First though, you'll have to fight the Smelter Demon. Before doing any of that, however, I suggest stopping and speaking with Majerold. He has a strong sorcery that should fit right into Thalia's sorcery build. I'm a little skeptical after the last couple minutes of her being wrong, but I'll try to find Majerold and see if she's right. I kept getting invaded by Dennis and Sharon, but after decades of trying, I managed to kill them both so they would leave me the f*** alone. It took another couple years to actually reach Majerold, but when I did, Kathy was proven right. I bought the Great Heavy Soul Arrow spell and added it to my arsenal. Then, like she said, I challenged the Smelter Demon. I almost actually had him on my first try, but he hits hard and I was not quite ready. I came back fully knowing that he hits like a truck and killed him by using the proven method of running the f*** away. And as soon as he was dead, I got killed too. This game is really something else. Now, I've got to kill the old Iron King. I didn't know how to reach him, so I ended up on the roof. I ended up fighting the Pursuer Jr. Jr. I got baited to death by some dickhead invader, and after running for what felt like ages, I reached the next bonfire. This one, much closer to the boss than the others in the game so far. Kathy, you got any advice here? I suggest unleashing your most powerful spells right away while he's stuck in his opening animation. This method will ensure that you land lots of damage without risking taking any. Then the fight is simple. Let him do an attack, and attack him while he's stuck. Just make sure you don't walk off the platform you fight on. Yeah, I may have done that once or twice, but she's right. This fight is very simple. His attacks are brutal, but all you've got to do is move out of the way and counter. Do that a couple times, and he's a goner, earning you your second soul of a great one. All right, Kathy, I'm, I mean, we're doing great. I have no idea where to go next, though. Help me out. 
There are a few different locations you can go to, however I suggest hunting down the Rotten next. The Rotten will give you the third soul of a Great One. You'll have to drop down the hole in Majula and traverse the Grave of Saints, the Gutter, and the Black Gulch. Great, that sounds like so much fun. I was expecting this stretch to be the slog of the game. The stretch that just really sucks, but frankly, I think I'm over the slog. The Grave of Saints wasn't that bad, and the fight with the Royal Rat Vanguard was much less annoying than I thought it would be, and just kinda weird. I mean, it's just a bunch of rats with one rat that you need to hit a bunch. I guess we can add that to the list of stupid boss fights. After that, you end up in the gutter. Now, the gutter, I don't think anybody likes the gutter. Going through it didn't take all too long, a torch made it much easier, and without any boss fight, I'd call this area forgettable at best, but the Black Gulch, the next area, is a real f***ing pain. It's hardly a whole area like the others thus far, it's more of just a boss run. A boss run full of poison and death that you just have to spam roll through. I mean, I'm sure you don't have to, but if you have no skill like me, then that's probably your best option. All of my expectations leading up to the Rotten have been wrong, and my expectations for him were also wrong. I thought he was gonna be really hard, but he wasn't too bad at all. I died on my first try, but on my second, I was a little more careful, kept my distance a little better, and nailed it. Three of the four Great Ones down. Kathy, tell me about how to find the last one. Reaching the final Great One, Duke's dear Freya, won't be quite as easy. First, use a fragrant branch of yore to wake up Rosabeth. She's currently blocking your path. All right, I've got a few of those. What's up, Rosabeth? Oh, yeah, I bet that whole being turned to stone thing sucks. Take your time. Rosabeth asks you for a piece of clothing so that she doesn't feel so exposed. No problem, right? So I asked Kathy what I should give her, and I f*** you not, she made me give her the literal shirt off my back. Here, dog, take the shirt and f*** off, Kathy. Rosabeth is very nice, though, so it's okay. Back to beating the game, where am I supposed to go next? You will have to go through the Shaded Woods. Checking out the area, I ran into this freaky bird lady, who I now know is Ornifex, and then once again, accidentally ran into this area's boss, Quaylog. Wait, what the f***? Is that really her? Oh, no, but pretty damn close. Kathy, what am I looking at here? This is Scorpioness Najka. She can be a very tough boss, unless you are able to exploit her weakness. Stand on the small stone platform in the arena. This will make it so that she is unable to land her underground attacks, which are her most devastating. Wow, that's some actual good advice. I didn't manage to get her on my first try, but you know how this goes. I beat her on my second try. This seems like it would be really hard without magic. Kathy, I've never seen this before. What am I looking at? This is the Doors of the Pharaohs. You will have to make your way through here to find the Brightstone Cove, where your next main boss will be waiting. Wait, next boss or next main boss? There's actually a few bosses between you and Freya, the next one being the Royal Rat Authority. Ah, she's confused again. I already killed them. Kathy, I'm really starting to lose- Oh, Jesus, dude, who made this f***ing game? Well, she was right. Now, I'm no authority on royal rats, but that is a f***ing dog with a rat's tail. Whatever it is, was, I killed it. We are really in the sauce now because I've never seen this place's name before. I've never seen it in videos. I do not know where the f I am. You are in Brightstone Cove. Going through here will lead you to Duke's dear Freya. All right, well, could do without all the spider imagery. Also, what the f is this? Kathy didn't even think to mention them, and who could blame her? This is just a group of normal ass enemies. I'm starting to get why people dog on this game's bosses. Like it or not though, it was a freebie, and it did end up leading me to where I needed to be. Wow. Wow, so much for spider imagery. This is an arachnophobe's worst nightmare. You know what? Scratch that. This is an arachnophobe's worst nightmare. I got rocked on my first try, but true to form, my second try was a success. I'm sure the fight would be much different if I was getting in close, but from a distance, Freya literally only uses one move, which is kind of funny and kind of annoying. I'm sure I'm annoying too, though, so it all balances out. I killed Freya and got the final soul of a great one I need. Kathy, did I beat the game? Sorry, Dumpy. Not quite. You're close, though. With the four great ones defeated, you'll next need to go to the Shrine of Winter. This can be found in the Shaded Woods by taking the left path. Well, I'm pretty sure she's wrong about that path, because I remember earlier seeing this big door, and I think that's what she means. Kathy, why is it telling me I need to produce the symbol of the king? Actually, Dumpy, you're at the wrong door. You did not follow the correct path. Oh wow, she's right. I'm the dipshit now. That doesn't feel good. I found the Shrine of Winter, which led me to Dranglea Castle. This place was a bit of a mess, and I was asking Kathy a hundred questions a second, and if I had just stopped and read carefully, then I would have been okay, but I kept skipping the vital information, which left me stuck and frustrated. Activate the golems. There are doors on the left and right side, each sealed by a golem mechanism similar to the one that opened the front gate of the castle. If I had just read that when she said it, then I would have been fine, but I had to figure it out for myself, once again making me the dipshit. I did figure it out though, and eventually made my way through the castle into another surprise boss fight, the Dragon Rider Duo. The second 
Then Dragon Rider shoots a bow and arrow for a while, so I was able to stack some considerable damage on the first one before taking them both on and beating them. Not bad for a dipshit. After fighting them, the next boss comes up pretty quick. The run to him, though, is a scary one, because if you're a second too slow, well, the fight itself, though, against the Looking Glass Knight, wasn't too bad at all. I think he's supposed to summon a player partway through the fight, but I had my game set to offline mode because I was getting owned by invaders in the Iron Keep, so the NPC he summoned wasn't too scary. I would imagine, though, that this is much more difficult when he summons an actual player. If that is how it works, I, I don't even know. Alright, Kathy, what are we doing now? After defeating the Looking Glass Knight, you will next have to go through the Shrine of Amana. This area can be incredibly difficult, so stay sharp and take your time. Incredibly difficult may have been putting it lightly. I said earlier that the Huntsman's Copse was my second least favorite area, but this is easily my most hated. I really thought about quitting. I thought about getting some kind of cheats and just killing everything with the press of a button, but I think I just needed a break. Kathy, I totally forgot to ask, what armor do you think I should be wearing? For Thalia's build, I would recommend the Lion Mage's set. This can be found in the misty section of the Shaded Woods. Just follow the leftmost wall, and you should come upon a chest containing the armor set. Okay, well, I tried looking through that area, but after doing a full loop and not finding the armor, I ran into a different area of the Shaded Woods, where I did eventually find the armor she was talking about. This armor gives you slightly faster casting speed, so great idea, Kathy. I also found a guy named Vangarl's Head, and he warned me that his headless body is out rampaging in the forest, and then after finding the armor, I found his body. This was a super cool encounter. I really appreciate little things like this in these games. Anyways, though, I've got to finish the Shrine of Amana. I did eventually get to the next bonfire, but this next section is even worse. I ended up just spamming magic and killing literally everything in the area so that I could make it through without dying. The next part wasn't a whole lot better, but this one actually leads to the Demon of Song. Kathy, advice please. The Demon of Song is invincible when its face is hidden. Wait for it to reveal its face and then strike. That worked perfectly. First tried the Demon of Song and was finally out of this dog sh terrible area. Next up is the Undead Crypt. This place was kinda cool. Can't say I hated it like some other places. This run up to the boss, unbeknownst to me at the time to be Velstad, is really cool looking. Velstad himself is also very cool. He diced me up the first time I fought him, and the second time was really close, but the third is where I got him. I kinda just spammed my strongest spells, which wasn't very rewarding. I think I'll try this game again without magic next time, because I don't like using it very much. But it all worked out. Vel Velstad was protecting someone. Kathy, who is that, and why isn't he attacking me? The person you're looking at was once the great King Vendrick. He has fallen to the curse of hollowing, and is now a shell of his former self. Damn, that's pretty dark. Am I supposed to kill him or something? You can certainly try, but I would advise against it. He has the strongest defenses of any boss in any Souls game. Killing Vendrick also isn't necessary to completing the game. For now, you should travel to Aldia's Keep to continue your journey. Right. See ya, man. All these keep is a wacky place, lots of weird enemies, lots of guys who will bite your head off, but running past them all will lead you to a boss fight. Well, it was hardly a fight. It's maybe the ugliest boss battle of all time, but it went fast at least, and now I'm in the Dragon Airy. I am so beyond lost at this point. Kathy, what am I supposed to do here? You should progress through the Dragon Airy until you reach the Dragon Shrine. Alright, well, I can't say I had a whole lot of fun running through here, but the area is at least very nice looking, so I'll give it points for that. Okay, Kathy, here at the Dragon Shrine, but uh, why aren't these guys attacking me? Those little guys are Dragon Knights. They will be non-hostile so long as you don't attack them first. Oh, well that's a relief. I ran through the Dragon Shrine, only stopping to fight the big guys before reaching a massive dragon. I've seen this guy before. This is the Ancient Dragon. I only remember this guy because he is famous for having one of the highest health pools in the Soulsborne catalog. I assumed I would have to fight him, but like the Dragon Knights, he was peaceful too. No complaints from me. Where to now, Kathy? You're in the final stretch. You can use the Ash and Mist Heart to journey into the memories of giants and obtain the giant's souls. There's also a boss in the memory of Jai, the Giant Lord. Fun fact, it has been theorized that this boss, the Giant Lord, is actually the exact same giant you fight at the start of the game, the last giant. That would explain why the last giant is enraged at the sight of you, because he remembers you from the past. I have no idea if what she's saying makes any sense, but it sounds good to me. The Giant Lord went down pretty easy, I collected the souls, and then used them to try and kill Vendrick. Kathy was right though, this guy is a f 
fucking tank. I gave up pretty quickly on this one. I didn't feel worth it to me, and I guess Kathy already told me not to do it, so I'll just move on. I think I'm ready to wrap things up here. How do I do that, exactly? To finish the game, you'll have to make your way to the Throne of Want. With the King's Ring you picked up earlier, you have access to this area already. Oh yeah, I forgot about this door. This place is really cool looking. It reminds me a little of Dark Souls 1 and 3, and the run-up to the final bosses in those games. Feels very nostalgic somehow. Alright, Kathy, one last time, hit me with some wisdom. This is a two-stage boss fight. The first stage being the duo of the Throne Watcher and Throne Defender. These two aren't too threatening individually, but together, they can apply pressure that is difficult to get out of. They also can revive each other after some time, so make sure you dwindle their health bars at the same time, and finish them off in quick succession. That advice was fantastic. Killing them seconds apart was definitely the right move, even if it made the overall fight a little harder. Now, you said this is a two-part fight. Who's the second? What the f***? She's terrifying. That would be Nishandra. She has a unique ability to summon wisps of death that will slowly sap your maximum health, essentially hollowing your character. You'll have to either defeat her quickly or destroy the wisps. Either way, make sure you steer clear of her sight. With your lighter armor, it has the potential to kill you in one hit. Steer clear, I did. I tried to mix up my tactics, firing pyromancies one second, then backing up, then attacking up close, then backing off, and finally, once she was weakened, I went in to finish her off with my sword. With Nishandra dead, I had beaten Dark Souls 2 and claimed the throne. I know there's a couple different endings, but this is what Kathy told me to do, so I certainly wasn't gonna argue. Great work, Dumpy! Now, we should get started on the DLC. Kathy, get the f*** off my screen. Thank you everybody for watching. I had a mostly good time with Dark Souls 2. If nothing else, I'm glad I finally finished. If you like these AI videos, let me know what game you'd like to see us take on next. Apparently I don't know my audience very well. Thanks for watching. GG's everybody.